the complete evolution of man. This video will be dedicated to a very interesting creature called man. Yes, today we will talk about us and about you. How did we come to be? What were we like before? And how did we become what we are now? More details about everything. There are several versions about the origin of man. First version. If you have your own garden plot, then go there immediately. Find a place where cabbage grows. If you watch cabbage for a long time, you can see how children appear in it. Second version. Somewhere far away, there's a factory for the production of children. If you, for example, need a child, you can write a letter to this plant, and a real stork will bring you the baby. A lot of storks work as couriers transporting children by air. They even made a full-length cartoon about it. Third version. God created man in his own image and likeness. This guy created Adam and Eve. These were the first people. This is a very long story about an apple, about a snake, and there was, um, someone else. In the fourth version, another guy named Darwin decided that people descended from monkeys, which greatly angered God's supporters. There are also several other theories that aliens created humans. People came from the sun, from grass, and so on. Personally, I like the version that the first people were real giants, up to seven meters tall. Giants appeared from the union of gods and angels. This theory is based on ancient images of bats and controversial finds of huge humanoid skeletons. Over time, the gods stopped visiting the earth and the giant people degenerated. In this episode, we will show you the complete evolution of man. Let's go. At first, our ancestors were bacteria, then fish, then fish with legs, then lizards, then mice, then squirrels, and so on. We want to tell you about the long and complete chain of human evolution. And we'll start with small bacteria. According to scientists, 530 million years ago, one of the first living creatures called Pacaya appeared. The average size of this small animal was only four centimeters or one and a half inches. The body of the human ancestor was elongated and compressed at the sides. Pacaya's head was small, with two tentacles similar to the horns of a snail. The horns were probably used as an instrument of touch. It is very important to note one thing. Scientists find only very close relatives of the transitional form, which by default is considered a distant ancestor of humans. Pacaya is only a contender for the role of great-grandmother of Homo sapiens, or a creature probably extremely similar to a human ancestor. The most important part of Pacaya's body is considered to be the notochord. This is the spine that this creature had, the same as in humans, but much smaller in size. Gradually, the notochord in such animals was overgrown, first with cartilage, and then with bones. A new round of evolution has occurred, and Arendaspis appeared. This creature was no longer Pacaya, but it has not yet become a fish. These small animals reached a length of 35 centimeters and are considered the oldest of the vertebrates, which already had a skeleton made of minerals. Arendaspis remains have been found in Australia, South America, and the Arabian Peninsula. After the analyses, scientists came to the conclusion that these remains are between 470 and 480 million years old. Arendaspis were slightly more fish-like than their worm-like ancestors. The head of these creatures was covered with a shell consisting of many scales and extending into the back. Under the head there was also a small and thin armored shield, but the tail remained mobile to escape from malicious predators. For example, from nautiloids, which could reach nine and a half meters in length, or approximately 32 feet long. Arendaspis were the first of the creatures that had small records. 
In the future, as a result of evolution, these plates will become real full-fledged teeth. The exoskeleton of Erendaspis was well developed, but inside this failed fish was soft like a meat stew. And this creature is called coelacanth. Scientists consider coelacanth not only to be a transitional link from a half fish to a real fish. This amazing species of ancient inhabitants of the oceans is called the fish that conquered time. 500 million years ago, coelacanths inhabited the aquatic part of the Earth in large numbers. For a long time it was believed that they disappeared from our planet approximately 66 million years ago. However, in 1938, a living specimen was miraculously discovered. This amazing find became a super sensation in the scientific world. Today there are two species from this order, which are called coelacanths. It is a large fish that can reach 2 meters in length and weigh up to 100 kilograms or 220 pounds. The lifespan of modern coelacanths is more than 100 years. The coelacanth is a deep sea fish that is difficult to observe in its natural habitat. To study this interesting fish, researchers use underwater cameras and apparatus. This has led to some interesting discoveries. For example, it has been observed that coelacanths not only swim in the water column, but sometimes walk along the seabed using their fleshy fins, which is a rare behavior in fish. These fish walk. Incredible. By the way, do you know why we move our arms when we walk? Our brain and body thus try to perform a gait like four-legged animals do. Another interesting fish is called Chictalic. Chictalic lived 395 million years ago, and this fish had paws. Real paws that left real footprints on the sea sand. Reconstructing the stride from these tracks allowed scientists to conclude that the animal moved by bending its body from side to side. Approximately how a salamander does it. There are no traces of tail dragging. This means that the sacrum and girdle of the hind limbs have already been formed. All these signs allowed scientists to say quite confidently that these were traces of tetrapods. It can also be assumed that the most ancient tetrapods, which walked on four legs, lived not in fresh waters, but in salt waters. It was this discovery that could confound the entire theory of evolution. Because scientists do not understand what this theory makes us think about the order in which life came to land. But these are only details of evolution that cannot cast doubt on the main and popular theory. And our task is to show you the theory of human evolution as accurately as possible. 375 million years ago Devonian fish went crazy we didn't climb onto land. These fish gradually ceased to have enough air in the water. And these fish were forced to invent lungs, which replaced their gills when the water went into the sand. By the way, fish necks appeared at the same time. So that the unfortunate ancestors, squelching in the drying mud, could reach up and grab air. Chictalic also had cervical vertebrae and ribs. 10 million years. This is a very long period of time. But it took exactly 10 million years for the next link of human ancestors to appear. Ichthyostegalia began to walk through the Devonian swamps. These were the first amphibians, from which reptiles would later descend. And even later, mammals will evolve from reptiles. But we will not rush the story of the great evolution. So, here is an ancient reptile that lived 315 million years ago. Gylonomus. A small lizard measuring 20 centimeters or almost 8 inches long. This is one of the first lizards that refused to live in the water element. This creature, like all the first reptiles, laid offspring in water, but was itself independent of water. 
reptiles divided into two large groups. These are amphibians and amniotes. Amphibians remain forever tied to water, and amniotes became the direct ancestors of mammals. Some more time passed. A large group of animals appear on Earth. Cynodonts. This was the transitional link from reptiles to mammals. These animals carried eggs, but were already covered with hair and reached large sizes. Some cynodon species were massively built and could grow up to 2 meters in length or up to 6 and a half feet in length. Mammals began to evolve. The reptiles didn't stop there either. Some creatures from reptiles began to evolve. Some crazy reptile decided to stand on its hind legs and gradually began to turn into the first dinosaur. Some of the first dinosaurs could even reach decent speed. By the way, cynodonts were not yet true mammals. The era of gigantism flourished. Mammals were smaller than dinosaurs. All the top of the food chain were conquered by dinosaurs. Mammals had to stay in the shadows. Most dinosaurs were diurnal. Therefore, mammals had to move and feed at night. This explains the reason why mammalian vision perceives a combination of only two colors. Birds have surpassed mammals, dinosaurs, and even us humans in terms of vision. Bird's vision allows us to see our world more colorful and picturesque. But mammals have another advantage. This is the sense of smell. By the way, it was from the olfactory lobes of the brain that the cerebral hemispheres, responsible for our intellect, subsequently developed. 160 million years ago, nature created the first place food mammal. It was the ancient rat Uramaya. It is the first known mammal to grow a placenta. The mammalian placenta allows the growth of a full-fledged fetus. This is Purgatorius. This creature also resembles either a mouse or a squirrel, but it was Purgatorius that is considered the first known primate. The first primate lived 66 million years ago. By this time, flowering plants had already appeared on Earth which gave the world nectar, juicy fruits, fragrant flowers, and, therefore, swarms of insects. All this delicious and buzzing menu had to be eaten by someone. This someone became the primatomorphs. For this reason, the ancestors of people even learned not only to actively climb trees, but also to jump. The sizes of primatomorphs were small and therefore the animals could easily and quickly hide from any predator in dense vegetation. The survival rate of the first primates was high. These little creatures were unpretentious in food and could eat anything. Omnivorousness contributed to the development of intelligence. At the same time, dinosaurs were actively dying out. If this had not happened, it is unlikely that the ancestors of people would have received evolutionary development. Purgatorius were fearless jumpers and jumped great distances. Such jumps developed the vestibular apparatus of our ancestors, which stimulated the development of neural connections in the brain. But in order to actively jump through trees and look into the distance, it is better to have eyes not on the sides of your head, but in front. So, our eyes began to move closer to each other. Another acquisition from those times. This is a grasping brush. With the help of a grasping brush, you can tenaciously hold onto branches. This can be done by both adults and cubs, who hold onto the mother's fur while jumping. After the extinction of the dinosaurs for two million years, primatomorphs became the most successful group of mammals on the planet. These creatures had no serious enemies until large birds of prey appeared. Archicebus appeared 55 million years ago. The small animal weighed only 30 grams, or less than one ounce. The length of Archicebus was 7 centimeters or 2 and a half inches. 
This creature strongly resembled a modern Tarsia. Archisebus was a transitional form between the dry-nosed monkeys and the dry-nosed primates. The change in the shape of our nose begins with our long-heeled ancestors. Separating the nose from the mouth contributed to better development of facial expressions. But this creature already really looks like a small monkey in the form in which contemporaries are accustomed to imagine it. This is Egyptopithecus. The creature already looks like a small monkey in the form in which we are accustomed to modern primates. Egyptopithecus lived 30 million years ago. The weight of the animal was about 6 kilograms. Egyptopithecus had a large snout and a long tail. He ate plant foods and led a diurnal lifestyle. Sedanius. This monkey was the size of a baboon and weighed 20 kilograms. The creature lived in a humid, warm forest 28 million years ago. Sedanius marks the separation of the ape species from the hominoid species. This was the last ancestor that had features of both. At that time, our forefathers will finally part with their monkey past. In the 18th and 19th centuries, all chimpanzee performers in the circus had a name that was popular at the time, Proconsul. Scientists took this name as a basis and named the progenitor of the chimpanzee Proconsul. This means a monkey that lived before the chimpanzee. Proconsuls and related species existed not only before the appearance of chimpanzees, but also other great apes. Primates lived 25 million years ago. During this period of time, most species of apes lost their tails. The tail is convenient for holding onto branches, but only if you are small. Proconsuls are also considered the last common ancestors separating humans from chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. Afterwards, our paths with the orangutans will diverge forever. About 10 million years ago, the ancestors of gorillas and chimpanzees separated from the human lineage. Macalopithecus appeared. The appearance of this creature is unknown due to the scarcity of finds. Most likely, Macalopithecus walked on four limbs, climbed trees and ate seeds and nuts, as evidenced by a thick layer of enamel on the teeth. Scientists believe that Macalopithecus africa was similar to Aurinopithecus, which lived 8 million years ago in northern Greece. Aurinopithecus had a large and wide face with rectangular eye orbits, rather large body sizes and prominent fangs and males. But Aurinopithecus was not our ancestor. And the existence in Africa about 8 million years ago of Nacolopithecus and others like it proves that human ancestors came from Africa. Saholanthropus. This is the most controversial creature from the point of view of paleoanthropologists. Scientists were divided into two camps and are still arguing. Did Sahelanthropus walk on two legs or move on four? Sahelanthropus had a large brain, like that of modern chimpanzees or four times smaller than that of humans. When the remains of a creature named Ororan, who lived six million years ago, were found in Kenya in 2000, newspapers immediately dubbed him Millennium Man. In the local dialect, the word Ororan also sounds pathetic, first man. Most scholars believe Ororan is definitely our ancestor, although there are those who doubt it. What did Ororan look like? Looks just like a monkey. Ororan had small teeth relative to the size of his body. The creature had a rounded head and an elongated neck. The next evolutionary step was Ardipithecus. The human ancestor lived on Earth for four years about a million years ago. Artipithecus was already upright or was approaching this type of locomotion. These creatures also had very long arms reaching to their knees. Walking on two legs was a necessary element of the great ape. In the forests, these monkeys did not need to move on their hind limbs. The main means of transportation were hands. 
but when the forests began to turn into savannas, the need for walking increased many times over. Firstly, primates, when in open areas, often rose on their hind legs to observe a predator or find something interesting. Secondly, moving on four legs in hot climates always expends more energy than moving on two legs. Less area of the moving body means less heating of the body itself. It was due to the heating of the body that the long, thick fur turned into short and thin. Lush hair remained only on the head to protect this head from deadly ultraviolet radiation. Primates no longer needed to hold onto tree branches with their hands or run through trees with their hands. Nature has found another use for the hands of the future man. These were stones that flew into the heads of evil predators and then into the victims. Three and a half million years ago, the first tools appeared. Why were these weapons needed? Such primitive tools made it easier to butcher prey and scrape meat from bones. And eating meat helped the brain grow. The making of tools itself, as well as the increasingly complex communication of our ancestors, necessary for effective hunting, also helped the brain grow. Australopithecus afarensis The famous skeleton of Australopithecus afarensis was found in 1974 in Ethiopia. Scientists named the discovery Lucy in honor of the girl whom the famous Beatles sang in one of their songs. Lucy was an upright creature who lived in what is now Ethiopia three million years ago. The arms were shorter than those of Artipithecus, and the pelvis was already very similar to a human one. After all, almost no one doubts that we originated from these creatures. Australopithecines walked on two legs, but were covered with hair. The height did not exceed one and a half meters or five feet. Weight reached 55 kilograms or 121 pounds. Australopithecines walked on slightly bent legs and had curved fingers and toes, with hips resembling those of a chimpanzee. Australopithecus collected plant food and probably already knew how to make simple tools from wood and stone. But not for hunting, but in order to separate meat from the bones of animals killed by predators. Australopithecus probably ate carrion and finished off others. But future people lived in families in which there was one main male and several females. Homo habilis or Homo habilis lived one and a half million years ago. Name he became the first to regularly use tools, and it was with him that the rapid growth of the brain began. His body is already much more human-like than that of Australopithecines but his face is not yet very much. Although the size of the jaws and teeth has already become smaller and the brain has become larger. In appearance, Habilis still somewhat resembled Australopithecus. The structure of the larynx shows that the Habilis could not yet pronounce as many sounds as we pronounce. However, they probably already had the rudiments of speech. Homo erectus or Homo erectus appeared, who lived 800,000 years ago. It was then that these demi-humans probably tried to use fire for the first time. Outwardly, they were already noticeably similar to us, and their brain volume was slightly smaller than ours. Homo erectus already lived in caves, used wooden spears and sometimes cooked food over fire. The erectuses were still low only one and a half meters in height. Their body was similar to ours, except with more developed hair, but the facial features still remained rather archaic. Homo erectus were engaged in gathering, eating roots, berries, and other gifts of the plant world. But periodically they went out hunting. Carrion was no longer the main meat diet. The remains of rhinoceroses, elephants, Giraffes and hippos were found near their fire pits. Erectus were capable of hunting very large prey. These people were constantly in danger. This circumstance forced the first people to unite into large family groups. 
These communities lived in small settlements. Research shows that the settlements were permanent. Heidelberg Man Heidelberg people of Africa 500,000 years ago. Some scientists believe that these people already knew how to build primitive huts. By historical standards, there was very little time left before the emergence of Homo sapiens. And he appeared. According to various estimates, this happened from 200 to 45,000 years ago. The Heidelberg people were tall, almost like us. Males reached 175 centimeters in height or 68 inches. Women were up to 150 centimeters or 59 inches tall. The men weighed about 62 kilograms or 136 pounds. And the women's weight was 51 kilograms or 112 pounds. The structure of the ear shows that they had approximately the same auditory sensitivity as modern people, so they could distinguish many different sounds. It is also shown that they were right-handed. They knew how to make high-quality tools, but no traces of any art were found among them. Neanderthals and other founders of the human race were not included in the evolution of modern man due to complete extinction. But there are still many mysteries to be solved in order to fully understand the history of our land. Thanks for watching our release until the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting releases from the Real Unreal channel.